Yesterday against El Salvador, Facundo Farias of Inter Miami suffered a very bad looking knee injury that required him to leave the match. At the time of the injury, there was some speculation about the severity of it. It looks like as of right now, sources have come out and said that he is in fact dealing with a torn ACL and he's projected to miss the remainder of the season. On the actual injury video, we saw that as Farias was running, his knee went in and buckled very awkwardly. And this is a position known as dynamic knee valgus. This is extremely risky for the ligaments of the knee, including that ACL. And that's something I wanna focus on with today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. With this channel, I take a look at sports injuries and I explain them so that they're a little bit easier to understand. I also go over the relevant anatomy of the injury and talk about what that person should expect when coming to physical therapy. If you enjoy this sort of content and you wanna see more of it, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more of these videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now we see here on the injury video that as Farias is running, he's going to plant with that left foot and that left knee is just going to cave in extremely awkwardly. Here I have a model of the knee joint. And so the knee is formed by this femur, also known as the thigh bone, that's going to come down to form the top portion of the knee here. Then we have the tibia, which is going to come up and form the bottom portion of the knee. As we flip the model laterally here, we have a fibula bone as well, which is also located in the lower leg. And there are four main ligaments that are located within the knee joint that essentially contribute to overall knee stability. The first one and most applicable ligament for this video is that anterior cruciate ligament, also known as the ACL for short, located right in through here. As we flip the model medially or towards the inside here, we have the MCL, also known as the medial collateral ligament. As we flip the model towards the outside or lateral piece here, we have the lateral collateral ligament, also known as the LCL. And finally, as we move towards the back here, we have the posterior cruciate ligament, also known as the PCL. There are also two other main structures that are located within the knee that are pretty important. They are the medial and lateral meniscus. You can think of these two pieces of fiber cartilage essentially as shock absorbers between the femur and that tibia bone. So let's go over the basic functions of the ACL. The first one, because of the attachment of the ACL, its main function is it's going to prevent any anterior translation of the tibia. So let's go over that briefly. Any anterior movement of the tibia looks like this. This is essentially that tibia gliding away from the femur. And as you can see, on, as I do this on the model here, that ACL is going to check that motion. The ACL also has a major function in providing a rotational stability about the knee. So anytime a person is going to go through a cutting motion where they're going to be planting and exploding off of that, the ACL is also going to be providing a rotational stability going through the knee joint itself. Now let's talk about the caving in of the knee, also known as a dynamic knee valgus. So anytime we see somebody where their foot is going to be externally rotated outwards, when we see that knee caving inwards, this is known as a dynamic knee valgus. And this is an extremely risky position of the knee because as we do this, this is stressing all of those structures located within the knee, particularly that ACL because its second big function is to provide that rotational stability. So as we look again on the injury video, as he plants, that knee caves inwards. And as he does this, it looks like that's where we see that knee buckle, which is probably the moment that that ACL led to having a tear. Anytime we see somebody's knee go into this position when playing a sport, especially in a non-contact injury, we immediately start to think that the ACL is being involved here. And there are a couple tests that we can do on the field to essentially rule in an ACL tear. The first one is known as a Lachman's test. And what we're going to do is we're going to provide some stability to that femur. And as we do this, we're going to essentially do anterior translation of that tibia. We're doing this because in a healthy ACL, this is going to prevent that motion. And so we do this on the injured leg and we do this on also the non-injured leg. And if we feel more laxity and or pain going through the injured leg, then this helps us rule in what we think is an ACL tear. There's another essential test that we can do. It's called an anterior drawer test. It's a very similar position, but it's just done a little differently. But essentially that also means that we are going to providing some anterior translation of that tibia as well. 
These tests are usually done on the spot at the time of the injury by the medical staff, but of course that gold standard to really confirm an ACL tear is going to be that MRI, which we know that Farias had today and confirmed. The grading system for ACL injuries is as follows. They are grades one, two, and three. In a grade one, this is where you're getting stretching of the ACL. In a grade two, you're getting partial tearing. And finally, in a grade three, you're getting a full rupture. Anytime they're talking about an athlete having a torn ACL, it's very safe to say that it is a grade three because this will sideline somebody for the entire season, oftentimes ending in surgery because anytime somebody has a fully torn ACL, that knee is just not nearly as stable as it needs to be. Anytime we get somebody in the clinic with a fully torn ACL, they're going to usually have a surgery known as an ACL reconstruction because essentially what they're going to do is they're going to repair that torn ACL and give them a brand new one. After surgery, the person is usually in a very big brace known as a drop lock and they're going to be locked in full extension to allow that graft some time to heal. Sometimes there are some weight bearing precautions. It really depends on the surgeon and if something else like the medial meniscus has also been involved in the injury. So as of right now, we don't know if any other other structure has been involved, but usually for ACL injuries, if something else is involved, this can also delay the recovery time. Then as we start to work on range of motion and strengthening going through that leg, we can start to really push them in physical therapy as long as they've had very good follow-up visits with the surgeon and we get the okay. The entire process for rehab for an ACL reconstruction can take anywhere from about eight to 10 months. It really depends on how that person is presenting in physical therapy and the type of activity that they want to get back to do. So as of right now, it looks like Farias unfortunately does have a long road ahead of him in terms of recovery, but if I have to hear any updates or anything regarding his particular injury i'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section also if you happen to hear anything please feel free to update us as well so we wish Farias the best of luck moving forward with his long recovery we hope that there are minimal complications and then we can see him come back as soon as possible thank you so much for tuning into my channel today if you enjoy this sort of content i'm going to go ahead and link one of my playlists so that you can watch some of the other injuries that i've talked about in the past thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you next time